G'day guys. Hey, just painted this little uh, plane here, here in Papamoa. Um, oil paint took me just over an hour, so we'll um, go ahead and play the time lapse now. Okay guys, here yeah, I'm back in the studio here and just gonna watch this time lapse play out with you guys and explain a few things as I go. So just starting off with my sky there, always working from distance into the foreground. So logically I start with the sky and um, I've got the subtitles coming up so you can see the colors that I'm using, but yeah, that sky is just a beautiful sort of um, baby blue sky. So it's thalo blue, um, titanium white with a touch of ultramarine. And um, yeah, if I wanted to make that sky a little bit more gray, I'd add a touch of orange to it. But as it was, when I was painting the painting, it was just a beautiful blue sky. Now you see me putting those clouds on, putting them on with the whole bristled fan brush, number two, and coming back with that badger brush and blending them out. And um, a little bit of gray there, um, added some orange to that um, blue sky mix to get that little bit of gray. But anyway, yeah, just um, blending out those clouds with that hog bristle fan brush. But anyway, I'm standing, sitting here beside the actual painting. So now I can go in and actually show you what they look like up close. Steady that camera. But I think um, if you can see that one, the top of those clouds are nicely feathered out. And that's why I'm lifting that badger brush up and preserving that top ridge. So they're only little clouds, but it gives you, hopefully it gives you some idea of how I do them. So yeah, just finishing off those clouds there, the whole bristle brush and the badger brush, and hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now, now that you've seen that up close. And here I go, moving forward, moving onto the hill. It's just a pastoral hill, just farmland really, not a lot of bush on it. Um, and I'm just mosaicing in the darks and the lights. The darks are ultramarine blue, burnt umber and titanium white, making a sort of a really dark blue. And the greens, the greens are ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow pale and a touch of cadmium orange in this case and what I actually done was I actually added some white so if you want to lighten your green you've got your you make your green over your ultramarine blue and your cadmium yellow pale right and you can lighten that either by adding white or yellow but if you use white it'll send your green opaque and in this case I was after the opaque look so that worked really well um, Anyway, working forward onto the foreground there, just really blocking things in with those colors. And now back on the hill in the distance and starting to work those intermediate tones. So it was getting late in the day. It was actually really windy to be honest and it was, um, <laughs> it was on a busy road. So um, there was a bit going on and uh, the, you can actually see the pellets shaking around. I think you can almost see the um, grasses blowing in the background there. So yeah, moving back onto that hill now and starting to work those transitional tones in between the darks and the lights. So I mosaic those darks and lights on. Now I'm coming back with the transitional in between tones. So I wanted to come back to the painting and actually zoom in closer and show you the difference here. The thing was I put the lights on and then I put the darks on or vice versa. But anyway, transitional tones, what would be easier would be people can be tempted to just blend the light into the dark to make this transitional but in actual fact what you do is you you mix up your tra transitional tones and then apply them apply these different colors and different shades apply them to your painting rather than just blending through and you know then you get like this little bits of magic that the paintbrush creates well hopefully there's some magic maybe there's not much magic in this one but yeah that's how you do it. You don't just blend it through. Well, I don't blend it through anyway, so that's what works for me. So now you see me carrying on putting those transitional tones in and starting on these trees. Now, um, when the wind's blowing your panel around, it's shaking in the wind and you're trying to put wet paint on top of wet paint, like trees up on the horizon there. That's, um, that's pretty tricky. You know, you wonder why you're trying to do that at the time. But anyway, now I go and put my trees on, I use a short filbert brush, but I'm going to come back and make another video of me painting the bush once we get out of this COVID lockdown. I better get out into regional travel and make a, another video in the bush. Um, that'll be cool. Because I, to be honest, I really do like painting bush and trees. Well, we call it bush in New Zealand, but I suppose it's called forest overseas. So forest and trees, that's what I really enjoy painting. Um, 
Now working my way into the foreground. Um, using this fan brush again, the same one I put the clouds on with, a whole bristle number two fan brush and creating those grasses in front. Um, so the colour that I initially blocked in was going to be the darkest colour, basically the darkest colour, so that creates the shadows. And now I come in and create the highlights of the grasses with this hog bristle brush. And it's really random. Um, and it just came together quite fast and yeah, like I say, it was windy and, and pretty horrible. So yeah, just um, I'm pleased it went as well as it did towards the end. And a little bit of titivating there, cruising around, finishing off here and there. And the fence, so that fence went in. Um, now I apologise to the farmer because the fence is actually a primo fence and I made it look so rustic, like it's an embarrassment if you're a fencer and it doesn't look like that. The fence is actually perfect. Um, you can see the fence just in the background there. It doesn't look anything like my fence. So that's sort of how it finished up on site and this is like the next day in the studio. I'll be honest and say someone actually contacted me that saw me on the side of the road and said they wanted to buy this and they actually live like under the hill. So I thought, jeepers, I better go and get this a little bit more geographically correct than what I had it. So I just moved a couple of trees around. I did put those trees on top of the hill again. Right, so that's about how it finished up, guys. Um, hey, thanks for watching. If you watched it all the way through, um, if you remember to like and subscribe it if you really enjoyed the video. Uh, there's a little painting. Um, I'm hopefully going to try and do one a week if I can. I should be able to. Um, next week i got a, um, oh that's actually the little, oh that's terrible light. But anyway, that's the little mock-up drawing for the painting that I'm working on that I'm going to try and make a video of next week. Anyway, cheers for watching.